Being a Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs fan for the last couple of years has been very, very rough, but it appears there's some light at the end of the tunnel. The Bulldogs have made a host of signings in 2022. Now, they sort of did the same in 2021, and it hasn't really worked out, but there were sort of a lot of unknown sort of players. You guys like Kyle Flanagan, you guys like Jack Hetherington, the sort of guys who were unwanted at other sides and then went for an opportunity. I will say Nick Kotrick was a big signing, and he hasn't really had too many opportunities himself on the wing and in the centres. He was playing in an absolutely terrible side, and obviously he's ended up injured for the rest of the season. So, look, it hasn't really worked out for Nick Kotrick, but I think going into 2022, I think it'll end up being a great signing. Now, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a Bulldog supporter, so I am invested in this side. And I will say straight up, the Bulldogs still need to sign a hooker. I'd say Brandon Smith is probably the obvious one. Although, just, just give us some half-decent hooker, and I think the Bulldogs will be fine. But the point of this video isn't to go through and nitpick the Bulldogs side and say, this is who they should sign, this is who they shouldn't sign. We're going to be going over the people who they have signed for 2022, because they've signed some really, really nice players. Now, obviously, I'm doing this in 2021, so there is a chance there's going to be a couple more signings. So if you're watching this in 2022, or even a couple of weeks time, or in a couple of months, and there's been some more signings, just apologies for that. Now, we're just about to get into the signings, but before we do that, I just want to give a special shout out to Drum Clothing, they're sponsoring the channel at the moment. They sent me a few pieces of clothing to wear in videos and obviously I've been wearing the beanie. It is a fan favorite. I've seen you guys in the comments section saying you've been buying the beanie. So you guys are obviously enjoying it. Now if you want to check them out for yourself, link is in the description below. It's drum.com.au. You can go and check them out. And when you're on the site, you'll see that they specialize in surf, skate and streetwear. So definitely go and check them out. That's up your alley. Also while you're doing that, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also make sure to use the notification bell as well. It's super important. And don't rely on the sub boxes. They're super dodgy. Don't rely on them. Use the notification bell. Also, give me a follow on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT for the most part. It's Mr. Luke just for Facebook, but for everything else, it's Mr. Luke and YT. Now we got the plugs out of the way. We got the little intro out of the way. Let's get into these Bulldog signings. Now the first player that the Bulldogs signed for 2022, I believe, was Josh Adakar, and it goes all the way back to 2020. They announced it pretty far in advance, and I was super excited. I think I made a video at the time. I think it actually did really well on the channel. So obviously, a lot of Bulldogs fans are super keen for Josh Adakar to move to the Bulldogs. Now I get lots of questions about who's my favorite player in the NRL. I think Josh Adakar is it. Got a great personality off the field. Fantastic player on the field. Uh, come through the Storm system. Obviously, came through the West Tigers system initially. Tigers. Junior didn't get an opportunity, went to the Storm for an opportunity, and he grabbed it with two hands. Now, we've seen other guys as of late go to the Storm looking for opportunities. Guys like Rena Smith, next year Nick Meany goes to the Storm. Um, I think Josh Adokar is, is a great example for them of what they can achieve. And obviously, Adokar has one of those just one of those rare gifts in the fact that he is so fast. So you've got a lot to work with. And he did replace Corabetti as well, who was a very similar story to him. Went from the Tigers, went to the Storm, super quick. But Josh Adokar, he is just so good. He turned himself into a New South Wales winger, into the Australian Kangaroos winger. And I'm hoping between him and Nick Kotrick, they can form up a formidable partnership in 2022. There's even a few whispers that Adokar is still going to play fullback. I know the Bulldogs eventually signed a fullback, and we'll get to that later. But there was a lot of talks at the time when Adokar signed that he wanted to play fullback. So I wouldn't be surprised if he does get an opportunity there. But look, Adokar in the side, he's just going to create so many opportunities for you. Uh, times when you have really nothing on, you can sort of just pass it at a car. And if he's got an inch of space, he will take that and he'll get around that defender. We've seen the Storm do it. We've seen the Storm just straight up just kick it down the field and then Adokar chases. What other player apart from maybe Jason Saab can you do that for? Josh Adokar and Jason Saab, that's about it. So I think for the Bulldogs, I think it's a huge signing. I think it's a low risk signing as well because he wanted to come back to Sydney. I know there's a lot of talks about him going to the Tigers or the Rabbitohs, but he's ended up at the Bulldogs and I'm absolutely buzzing about this signing and I know other Bulldogs fans are too. Now I believe the next player the Bulldogs signed was Matty Burton. Now there's a lot of talk about him backflipping and the Panthers wanted to keep him. Things have sort of gone quiet and it's all gone quiet as soon as he got an opportunity in the halves uh, for Penrith. Now, he got an opportunity with Tyro May and obviously they didn't play as well as what Nathan Cleary and Jerome Lawyer was and Matt Burton seemed to be the scapegoat. Tyro May seemed to be escaping it from Cleary for some reason and Tyro May kept retaining his spot and Burton kept getting chucked back into the centre. So I think that showed where he stood at Penrith and I thought it was absolutely disgusting how Penrith just kept trying to get into backflip and, oh, you should stay and play in the centres with us and don't go to the Bulldogs. They'll ruin your career, all that sort of stuff. It's just all rubbish. The guys played in the halves his whole life. He's obviously going to want to play in the halves going into the NRL, especially when he can get opportunities at other clubs. It's only really the Panthers that he wouldn't get an opportunity at. You chuck him in a lot of other sides, probably everyone except the Storm, he'd probably get a start and gig. And to be honest, I never really thought he was actually going to backflip, but there was just so much talk about it that you thought, maybe, maybe it might happen, uh, but he isn't going to backflip. He's coming to the Bulldogs next year. Uh, I think he looks like a fantastic signing, even more so after last night's performance against the Roosters. He was absolutely outstanding. Man of the match, scored two tries. I think he's really shown, even at worst, at worst, He's a fantastic center. At best, 
he can be one of the best 5.8s in the comp. Um, I think Bulldogs have got a great signing there. And they've also signed him on a fairly good deal too. I think it was like 500, 600,000. And, and for a quality half, that is a really, really good deal. Now, obviously, he is very inexperienced. He is very raw, but I really like what I see in Matt Burton. And I think he can be a great signing. Yeah, I didn't all the other signings around him. Um, I think he's going to be a great one. The only problem is, I think when we signed him, I think we saw the future as, all right, we've got Burton and then we've got Flanagan. They're our halves. Now it's sort of like we got Burton, but... Who else do we have? We've got Avarillo there. We've got Bailey, Bundy, Odo. I think it's probably more BBO. I think he's probably your more likely halfback. And then you've got Matt Burton there in the 5'8", or vice versa. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think regardless, Matty Burton, fantastic signing. I can't wait to see what he offers. Great defender, great with the ball, great kicking game. Just offers exactly what the Bulldogs need. Now, moving on to the next player, I'm starting to get lost in who was signed first and who was the next player and all that sort of stuff. But I think the next player might have been another Penrith player. I think it was Brent Naden. Now, he's found himself in the reserves for the most part of 2021. And he ended up playing in the grand final for Penrith. He got dropped. We all know the story about that, the whole drug issue. And he ended up suspended. Nearly lost his career, but he sort of had a bit of a lifeline thrown to him. By the Bulldogs, even Penrith has sort of started playing him and he's played pretty well since he's come back into the side. But I think he's found himself back in reserve grade. Well, it's not even reserve grade to be played, but he would be back in reserve grade. He's not in the first grade side is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but I think he's going to go to the Bulldogs. I think wherever he finds himself in the centers on the wing, I think he can do a job for us. I'm assuming he hasn't signed on a huge contract either. I can't imagine a lot of other sides were sort of after him, especially considering his track record. Now, we know he's a fantastic player and there's a lot of fantastic players in the NRL, but he does have a history of doing some dumb shit off the field. So I think Nathan coming to the Bulldogs. He's looking for an opportunity. He's not getting it at Penrith currently. And I think linking up with Trent Barrett, where he probably played his best football, I think that would be a great thing for him. And for the longest time, the Bulldogs have been struggling with centers. Ever since Josh Morris really left, we haven't had some quality centers. They signed Nick Kotrick. They tried to make him into a center when he's a winger. Didn't work out. We got Will hopper White. He's been playing fullback. We chucked him into the centers. Hasn't worked out. We have young set Aaron Shop there in the centers. He's been okay, but he's very, very young. He's very raw. So we do need someone who has a little bit of experience and someone who can be a bit of a game breaker for us. And I think Brent Naden is that guy. Now, honestly, it all sort of depends on how he gets his off-field sort of antics, whether he can keep himself under control, because um, I think he can be a fantastic player. But... Like I said, he just has to get his head right off the field and then on the field should sort itself out. Overall though, I think it's going to be a fantastic signing. You add in all the other signings the Bulldogs have made over the years and I can't see this being any worse than some of the other guys. Like we've got Corey Allen who can play center. We've got Kodrick who can play center. We've got a couple of guys who can play center, but I think this is going to be a great signing. I think Nathan's going to make a difference to this Bulldog side. Honestly, I'm surprised it wasn't more of a push to get him in 2021 because like I said, he's just sitting in the reserves of Penrith. Hasn't really had too many opportunities. So I am surprised he hasn't made the early venture over to the Bulldogs, but I suppose he wants to try and win a premiership. Now we got all the Penrith players out of the way, we may as well get on to the Dragons players who will be joining. The first player who signed was Matt Dufty. Now I've got to say, I'm not the biggest fan of Matt Dufty. Obviously got himself in trouble off the field. That's sort of why he's found himself on the out at the Dragons. And I think he was already on the out at the Dragons, to be honest with you. Um, he'd been getting dropped. We had Sloan in at fullback. They've been playing Jack Bird in at fullback as of late. And I thought Jack Bird actually did look really good at fullback, but... Matt Dufty has shown at times he can be an absolute star. He's also shown signs he can be an absolute reserve grader. Like he, he's, he's got like a very high ceiling, but also has a very low ceiling. Now in attack, he can be very, very good. In defense, absolutely atrocious. We've seen it firsthand, the Bulldogs up against the Dragons. Bulldogs have beat the Dragons quite a lot, and I've seen Matt Dufty has some absolute shockers. We've also seen him in the past have some absolute worldies. We've seen him score some amazing tries, uh, but every amazing try he scores, he seems to let in two or three easy ones. So he does have a lot to work on in his game, but he does have a lot of good elements to his game as well. So in terms of chucking him into this Bulldog side, is he better than the fullbacks that we have at the club currently? Yes, he is. And I think that's really what it comes down to. And the fact that it is a one-year deal, so this isn't a high-risk signing. This isn't you know them chucking huge money at him for a long-term contract like they have done with a couple other guys. This is a one-year signing. If it works, if it works, you re-sign him. If it doesn't, kick him to the curb. You don't need to take too many chances on guys like him. And I think he's coming here for an opportunity, obviously. Same with the other Dragons player we're going to be talking about. But look, Matt Dufty, he has all the potential in the world. It's just a matter of him putting it together and sort of just sorting out his defense. If he can sort out his defense, I think he can be an absolutely amazing fullback. But like we talked about, it's a big what if because I think he's been in the NRL for long enough that I feel like if his defense was going to improve a lot, he would have already done it. And he hasn't really shown any sort of improvement at all. So look, this might be as good as Dufty gets. But like I said, it's still better than the fullbacks we've got at the club right now. So I think it is going to be a good signing. Whether it's going to be a signing that works long term, probably not. I think it probably will just be this one year deal. Maybe add in another like two year deal afterwards or whatever. But 
I don't see him as the long-term fullback, but I do see him being a great little stopgap for us. Now, we just got done talking about one player who was at the barbecue that Dragons held. Now, we're going to be talking about the guy who hosted it, the guy who ended up getting sacked. Paul Vaughan is the man we're talking about, and he has signed a one-year deal with the Bulldogs. So, both of the Dragons guys, both the guys who are at that party, they end up signing one-year deals. Now, Paul Vaughan, for the most part, has been a fairly... Fairly clean skin in the NRL, but as of late, in terms of all the COVID stuff, he's broke the COVID bubble a couple times, obviously ended up sacked at the Dragons. Apparently, there was a couple things going on behind the scenes too. But we know Paul Vaughan can be a fantastic player. We know he has been in the past. Obviously, he's played for New South Wales, played for Australia. Now, is that the player that the Bulldogs are going to be signing? Probably not. He is obviously aging. He's getting quite old in terms of rugby league standards. But I think you still get a fantastic player in Paul Vaughan. I think he has a lot to offer in terms of experience, in terms of leadership. Now, not maybe not in the sense that he's, you know, a captain Material, but just in a sense that he's a guy who you can see just leading from the front foot. You can see him doing his actions on the field, making great runs, making those tackles. And obviously, he's played at a high standard. He's played international games. He's played rep games. He obviously has a lot to offer. And you factor in the rest of the Bulldogs forward pack. I think this is a very, very formidable forward pack. You've already got Josh Jackson there. You've already got Hetherington there, who, you know, he is rocks and diamonds, but his diamonds are very, very good. If he just reels in the penalties and just stupidity, he can be a fantastic player. That can be said about a lot of these players that the Bulldogs are signing. Just got to reel in the stupidity, but we're taking a big risk on it. Um, but Hetherington, I think, can do the job. Luke Thompson, we've seen, can do the job. He's kind of similar to Hetherington, not in the sense that he's taking people's head off, but does spend a lot of time on the sideline. But you've got a lot of players to work with. Even Adam Elliott, we've seen a few glimpses of him doing some good stuff. You've got Dory there. You've got a couple of other young says, I think the Bulldogs have a really good forward pack going into 2022. And that's not even the last signing, Paul Vaughan. But, but just in terms of a high profile signing, Paul Vaughan is a very, very good one. And I think with Dylan Napper leaving, I think Paul Vaughan just comes straight into that side. I think he'll slot right in and I think he'll fit in well with this Bulldog side. And it is a one year deal. So if it works, similar to them, what I was saying with Matt Dufty, if it works out, resign him on a longer contract, hopefully not a huge contract because like I said, he is getting quite old. And we see props, as soon as they sort of start hitting those 30s, they do decline quite rapidly. But you can easily re-sign him and if it doesn't work out, just get rid of him as well. Same with Dufty, same with Vaughan. They're low risk tidings in my opinion. They're guys who are just looking for an opportunity and Paul Vaughan is definitely looking for an opportunity after getting sacked by the Dragon. So he's going to have a lot of motivation to try and sort of I guess make up for the lost income, make up for the you know the things that he did to the Dragons. Because for a player like Paul Vaughan, who's done a lot in the game, you don't want to be known as the guy who got sacked by the Dragons for hosting a party and you know nearly ruining the NRL in the COVID situation. Now we just got done talking about a couple of players who have had some on-field troubles. The next one is also another one who's had some off-field troubles, and that player is Tavita Penguai Jr. Now we've seen him at his best. He is absolutely unstoppable. For the Broncos, who was single-handedly winning games, we've seen him take it to players. I remember up against David Fafita, he was absolutely ripping and tearing and just destroying day of Fafita and you can see you can literally see Fafita just go like I don't know what to do just Pengai just coming at me all night and just tired him out and I think when you see performances like that that's where it makes things very frustrating with Pengai Jr because you've seen him perform like that and you go yep he's capable of playing for New South Wales he's capable of playing for the Kangaroos but then the next week after playing that amazing game he'll come out and he'll have an absolute stinker you look at him and you go where did that player go how is that the same player you're doing stupid offloads you're dropping the ball giving away silly penalties now you get yourself suspended for five weeks that is the sort of player a pen guy is, but it is the sort of player that I think the Bulldogs are looking to sign. Bulldogs have to take some risks, and I was talking about making low risk signings in terms of Dufty and Paul Vaughan. I think Penguin Jr. is a very high risk signing. I think they're signing him on a fairly big contract. Uh, obviously, he does offer a lot when he's at his best, but we've got a lot of players who also do the same thing. Luke Thompson's another one. Like I said, Hetherington. They guys at their best can be, they can be really, really good forwards, but at their worst too, they find themselves on the sideline for 10 weeks. And we just got rid of one player who does similar things in Dylan Napper. We've seen him play a couple good games, and then all of a sudden he's out suspended or he's out injured. We don't want Penguin to come in and do that. We need Penguin to be consistent. Can he do that? I'm not sure. I did a video earlier talking about where Penguin was going to sign, and at the time, it didn't look like it was going to be at the Bulldogs. Obviously, they were in the mix, but I was sort of saying, like, Bulldogs, maybe stay away from Penguin. He's going to ask too much money for what he offers. And then, obviously, the Bulldogs ended up signing him. So, a little bit of egg on my face, but at the same time, I am excited to see how he goes. I'm excited to see how he progresses as a player. He is still fairly young. He does offer a lot. He does pack a punch. He's exactly what the Bulldogs need, but we need him on the field. We don't need him suspended. We don't need him injured. We need him to be on the field. And if he plays to his potential, he can easily be in this New South Wales side. 
easily. You're adding Josh Jackson there, you're adding all those players that I mentioned earlier, and the Bulldogs have a very formidable forward pack, and I know he played in a pretty good forward pack at the Broncos. He had Payne Haas there. Actually, to be honest, he only really had Payne Haas, but this Bulldog side, in hindsight, is a lot better than the Broncos forward pack that he's playing with. He's got a lot more experience there, and hopefully they can all reel each other in, and they can all just sort of play off each other and really hype themselves up, and they can take the Bulldogs to the top eight. But overall, I think all of these signings, I can't really fault any of them. Some of them may be for more money than what I would have offered them, but we don't really know too much about contract situations. We don't know how much they're on. There's a lot of speculations. We've seen in the past, you know, guys, talks like Sean Johnson. There's a lot of talks about Sean Johnson going to the Bulldogs, and then he came out after he signed with the Warriors and was like, yeah, that was funny. I never even talked to the Bulldogs. He was printing that I was going to be signing with them today. So it does, does show you that the media, they might know some things, but they don't know everything. So look, there's a lot of speculation. We can speculate about contracts and how much they sign for, but let's not do that. Let's just make a general observation of where they're good signings. And I think for me, the Bulldogs have made some very, very good signings. I'm super excited to see what happens in 2022. We've had some shit years. We've had some really, really shit years. Obviously, going to pick up the wooden spoon in 2021. Avoided it for the last couple of years, but realistically, probably had the worst side in the last couple of years. So it is nice to see us sort of jump from being those wooden spoon contenders to maybe being a top eight possibility. But leave it in the comment section below. What are your thoughts of the Bulldogs in 2022? Do you like the signings? Do you not like them? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, and if you happen to enjoy this video, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also, make sure to turn the notification bell. We talked about it earlier. Super important in terms of you actually seeing these videos. Don't rely on the sub boxes. Use the notification bell. Also, while you're at it, give me a follow on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT for the most part. My Facebook is Mr. Luke. Go ahead and give me a follow. Give me a like. Even my Snapchat and TikTok are Mr. Luke and YT. So go ahead and give me a follow. Give me a like. Do all that sort of stuff. Also, go check out Drum Clothing. Obviously, I'm wearing the beanie right now. You guys have been loving it. So go check out Drum Clothing. Drum.com.au. Go and check them out. Anyways, that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. Hopefully, you did enjoy it. Stay tuned for more content on the channel. We've got plenty of stuff to talk about. Plenty of Rubber League Live 4 content to come as well. So stay tuned for more, and I'll see you in the next one. See you.